Artificial Reflections is a new fascinating art project by Dub Lion, interacting with various AI technologies to stick a flag in the ground to map the accelerating developments in AI capability. Artificial, Artificial Reflections. Artificial, Artificial Reflections. Artificial, Artificial Reflections. reflections. Question. Why would Doug want to interview himself and record it into a shareable podcast using Chad GPT generated questions? Chad GPT. There could be several reasons why Doug might want to interview himself and record it into a shareable podcast using Chad GPT generated questions. One, to provide a unique and personal perspective on his experiences and insights. By asking himself questions, Doug can delve into his own thoughts and motivations in a way that might not be possible in a traditional interview setting. Two, to showcase his knowledge and expertise. As a teacher and mentor, Doug likely has a wealth of knowledge and insights to share, and an interview with himself could be a great way to showcase that expertise. 3. To experiment with a new format or medium. Podcasting has become an increasingly popular way to share ideas and insights, and Doug may be interested in exploring this medium for himself. 5. To challenge himself and grow as a communicator. Conducting an interview with oneself can be a challenging task, and Doug may be interested in pushing himself to develop his communication skills and abilities. Artificial, Artificial Reflections Artificial Reflections Artificial, Artificial Reflections Question, what are the best questions for music fan and podcast producer Doug Leung? Chad GPT 1. As a music fan, what is your all-time favorite album and why? So, as a music fan, yeah, I have always been a music fan, as long as I can remember. And that started with The Sweet, and I'm going to say The Sweet, Strung Up Sweet, is a double album, picture cover, and it had several of their brilliant pop songs on it, and a whole other side of heavy rock with uh, drum solos and... It was just a whole other world, so I realised at that point that they were two completely different bands and there was far more going on than the I could see on top of the pops at the age of 11. Um, so yeah, I'm going to say that. Two, how did you first get into producing podcasts about music? What drew you to this field? So during lockdown, 2000 and God knows what it was now, um, my daughter and I were bored, locked in the house, rattling around, didn't know what to do with ourselves and I don't really know how the idea came up but it was the idea that we could do something on Zoom and record it. So we chose some tunes that we thought would cheer us up and put them into an order, did a thing over Zoom and that became the first Lion's Den episode which I'm now on number 36 of. So yeah, it's a sort of mixture of my previous radio experience, radio production, and my love of music, and my love of my daughter, obviously, and a great thing to share between us, and mostly for friends and family so far, but um, it's been a very enjoyable process in itself. Three, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing the music industry today, and how can it be addressed? Biggest challenge in the music industry today is, is surviving, as it always has been. Uh, it's a miracle that venues are still open and that bands are still going. <coughs> and, you know, people have stopped buying music for a very long time, and so bands have been making a living out of touring and selling T-shirts for quite some time. I'm not really sure how streaming's affected it, it doesn't feel like it stopped people buying music. Um, I mean, Brexit's a complete nightmare for European bands playing here or our bands playing in Europe. That's a big problem that needs resolving. 
So I think the music industry is always up against problems. It really is. And it's a miracle it's survived in this way in this country for so long. I think that's testament to the infrastructure that we've got in this country around the music industry and radio, TV, record labels and stuff. Uh, long may it continue. Four, what is the most interesting or surprising thing you've learned while producing your music-related podcasts? I did a podcast with Arthur called Res uh, under the name Reservoir Doug, my other podcast. And Arthur played a lot of interesting kind of Eastern European goth stuff, which I really liked musically. And then the interesting thing about those tracks was that you can't really tell whether they were original tracks from back in the day, back in the 80s, or whether they're recent, because a lot of them have really gone out of the way to keep sort of authentic uh, 80s sounds, <coughs> keyboards and stuff. And then we chose a photograph of a brutalist hotel as the cover for that one, and it really made me think more about the relationship between architecture and music. It seems such a strange thing. I guess churches were always that, and lots, lots of places are designed acoustically. But, I mean, goth, gothic music and gothic architecture are in the same zone, and so I think brutalist music and... Sorry, brutalist architecture and minimalist electronic goth type music seem to sit together very well that was an interesting discovery five who are some of your favorite guests that you've had on your podcasts and why do you enjoy speaking with them well it seems a cop out to say everyone that i've had on my podcast so far have been an absolute pleasure because that is the truth of it um i haven't done any podcasts out of any sense of obligation and anyone who's my friend who's come on chosen some tunes and had a chat which is Dave Shreve Debbie several times Stella and a friend from across the pond that we met in Twitchland in lockdown Amber and Arthur uh, and Juice that's who I've done so far they've all been very different and I don't know, there's just something so beautifully simple about sharing a love of music and putting it together and playing it and I, I like making jingles and um, giving the show a bit of a character as well so um, that's a bit, a bit of a cop out that but I'm going to say all of them Six what advice would you give to aspiring podcast producers who are interested in creating content about music? I don't have any advice for anybody else. I mean, follow your passion. Do do what you absolutely love. And if you love talking about it and somebody else loves it and they love listening to it, then great. I, I wouldn't apply any other criteria than that unless you're really looking for commercial success, but I'm not the person to advise you on that. Seven. How do you stay up to date with the latest trends and developments in the M? Well, I can't claim to be up to date. My daughter's much more up to date than I am. And part of the podcast that I do is always that I always have another person involved who brings stuff to the table that I wouldn't have chosen and mixes it up a bit. Otherwise, I might as well just do a DJ set and not bother speaking. So I think it's always about the combination of tunes that makes it. Eight. What role do you think music plays in our lives, and why do you believe it has such a powerful impact on people? I think music's just always been the soundtrack to my life. And I got it that I'm a character in my own play, film, thing, and I get to choose the soundtrack. And music that's touched my emotional being or my spirit or something I don't really know I don't really know what the word is for that uh, becomes part of me so so many bands have made music that's just become part of part of who I am and I think the sensibility attached to the kind of music that I like has also made a big difference in what I think like what I dress like kind of people that I hang out with who I party with all that stuff so yeah, it's it's been everything to me. Nine. What are some of your favorite lesser-known musicians or bands that you think more people should know about? 
Now this is where I should have got my list in front of me, isn't it? I'm going to say um, Mesa Chups, who are like a swampy rockabilly band. I really like them. They're not very well known at the moment. Um, they're just really good fun. Uh, Los Bichos are the other ones. Uh, all female band. South American indie. Very, very happy music. Sunny music with an indie sensibility. Both of those bands are really great, really fresh approach to something that's not trying to be new, but it's got its, it has got its own very current thing going on. 10. How do you balance your passion for music with the demands of producing high quality podcasts on a regular basis? It is a balance. Uh, it seems like a, a flippant question that, and it can take a month or two to put a playlist together between me and Becky if we're doing the Lion's Den or another friend. I've got some playlists that have been hanging around for years that wait for the right time to be recorded. Uh, the Lion's Den, we seem to do one every month or two on average, so that is our balance. We get ready in our own time, we do it when we're ready in a way that we enjoy <clears throat> we did do a couple of stints on radio stations and that immediately knocked everything into having to do it for a certain time each month or each week or whatever it was and it all had to be the same length and all that kind of stuff that people need for a radio more like a radio format and I did enjoy doing that, but it put an unnecessary pressure on it. And in the end, we just went we just went back to like, we're just going to do it ourselves whenever we want and release it on Mixcloud when we're ready. And that is how I've kept that balance. Boom. Boom.